Bismillahi awwaluhu wa akhiru. We are discussing the Great War. And we want to present primarily to our Pakistani audience because we are here in Lahore, the ancient Lahore. And uh, this is the first time we are recording videos in Lahore, perhaps for 20 years. And we're trying now to explain the subject of the Great War in which we said weapons of mass destruction will be used as never before in history and millions and millions would die that's the tip of the iceberg there's much more to it than that uh, in the quran allah speaks in surah al-isra and he says I'm quoting the Quran for the first time. وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ قَبْلَ قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Did you hear that? قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا and there will not be a single town or city which will escape. The Quran is speaking about a great destruction of every town and every city. And it says, Allah will destroy them before Qiyamah. This is not an event which occurs at Qiyamah, the end of the world. This is an event which will occur before the end of the world. And those towns and cities which escape destruction would be punished with great punishment. No food. Food supplies are disrupted by nuclear war. No water. Water supplies are disrupted by the Great War. No energy. The electricity grid is no longer working. So those who are living in the remote countryside, they can survive. But the 10 and the 20 and the 30 million people living in the big, big cities that Dajjal has created, for them, it's terrible, terrible, terrible punishment. And this will take place before Qiyamah. But Allah is a just God. Everything in this world is built on truth. And truth is founded on justice. So Allah will not destroy a people who do not deserve to be destroyed. So who are those who are at the top of the list who deserve to be destroyed? The answer for anyone who has even panch rupiah, but five rupees worth of common sense and knowledge is modern Western civilization. So the schoolboys can continue taking money from the CIA and taking weapons from the CIA to go and launch the bogus jihad in Syria so that the new Ottoman Empire can expand and Syria will become a client state of Turkey. We are not fools. We have, said, we have heads on our shoulders and we can understand what you cannot. So ISIS will take money and take weapons, state-of-the-art weapons to launch their bogus jihad hmm? and uh, uh, to, to, to expand, to, give, to, to remove Assad. You can continue with your efforts, but we know that Allah will not punish a people who do not deserve to be punished. And those who deserve to be punished, most of all is modern Western civilization and the CIA and all its wickedness all these years. And the clients of the CIA in our midst who support the CIA like Saudi Arabia 
unlike Erdogan in Turkey, support the CIA with all this massive intervention to topple the government of Syria. Allah is going to destroy them. They are the first on the list. سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا الثَّقَلَانِ If you didn't know it before, Imran is telling you today. This is the top of the list for destruction. But those who have not, they have not been oppressors. They have been the oppressed. Why will Allah destroy them? So this war is coming. And we have said in this book, the Quran, the Great War and the West, that modern Western civilization will be crippled by this war. 300 years of rampaging through the world, bloody footprints on the face of the earth from the modern West will come to an end, will come to an end. But then what? What kind of world will there be after the Great War in which NATO and NATO's satraps will be waging war on Russia more than Orthodox Christian Russia, Russia which follows Jesus? And a China which is in alliance with Russia, a China which refuses to bend its knee in submission to those who are ruling the world today. Their plan is to provoke the big war for an easy reason to understand. They hope that in this great war, these two powers would mutually destroy each other. <laughs> Do you understand? So there will be no more Western civilization after the war, no more NATO, but that Russia and China will also be disapp will disappear as powers. That's their hope and plan. And when both this side and that side are mutually destroyed, the road will then be open for Israel to replace the United States of America as a new ruling state in the world. And in the same way that Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica. But the schoolboys don't know about that. All that they know is to criticize Imran, who said, get lost. In the same way that Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica, similarly, Pax Judaica will now replace Pax American. This is their planning. What is Allah's planning. <laughs> this is what we need to explain and understand. How should Pakistan respond to the Great War? There is an ominous warning in the Quran. Don't go for guidance in someone who is getting dreams and visions. <laughs> Don't go to the political analysis from the universities. Don't go from this one and that one and the other one to get guidance. Where do you look for guidance? Pakistan? Where? The answer, of course, is in the book of Allah, the Quran. And if you don't have scholars who are capable of going to the Quran and locating in the Quran that which explains the great war that is coming, that's sad, but I'm, I'm sure you do have such scholars. Maybe you're not listening to them. So I'm here in Pakistan for the first time in many years to share with you as gently as I can an explanation of Pakistan and the Great War. Allah warns in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِكَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not change the condition of a people regardless of how pitiful it may be unless and until they take the initiative 
using Allah's guidance in the Quran, in the Quran, to change their own condition. So if Pakistan is to prepare for the Great War, is it not simple to understand that your preparation for that Great War must commence from the Quran? Is that so difficult to understand? And if there are those who are offering an analysis based on the Quran, you should show respect for them and listen to them. If you do not do that, if you remain with your arms folded and you do nothing for the next four years, you do not go to the Quran for guidance. And when you go to the Quran for the guidance, the Quran tells you, follow him. This man who was sent to teach the Quran, Nabi Muhammad Allah is telling you in the Quran, follow him, follow Nabi Muhammad So not only do you have to look for guidance in the Quran, but you also must look for guidance in the Hadith, in the Sunnah, to the extent that it is in harmony with the Qur'an, because the Qur'an is absolute truth, al-haqq al yaqeen The Qur'an is absolute truth, al-haqq al yaqeen And nothing else shares that, of th that status. So it should be elementary for you to understand. They will never understand it in the Darul Room. That's why I'm leaving them, I'm moving on. They will never understand it. But for you, it's simple. Since this is absolute truth, and nothing else shares that status, the Quran must sit in judgment over the Hadith. If the Hadith speaks about Ghazwatul Hind, for example, which is now a matter of importance, for Pakistan in the context of a war which is coming, you do not simply accept the Hadith on Ghazwat al-Hind or a war which they interpret as a war in which Pakistan will defeat India. Muslim Pakistan will defeat Hindu India and Muslim Pakistan will then rule over Hindu India. If this is what it says, this is their interpretation. Of course, at the time, of the Prophet Islam, Hind was not <laughs> India. Hind was this whole subcontinent. But never mind. That's their thinking. The Quran must sit in judgment over the Hadith. And when the Hadith is in harmony with the Quran, we accept it. But we have to check out the Hadith and do the intellectual work, the research work, to see whether or not the Hadith is in harmony with the Quran. And that's not a work for school wise. No, no, no. And I'm inviting Pakistani scholars, inviting you to take a look at this Hadith about Ghazwat uh, because it, it seems to have captured the imagination of many people, including scholars. And it is pivotally important. You have to address it. Is this hadith in harmony with the Quran? That's the homework which has to be done. Now then, if a great war is coming, and it might come within the next four years, and I hope I'm wrong, what are the implications for Pakistan? Thank Allah that Pakistan has not betrayed the Quran. And Pakistan is not a member of NATO. Thank Allah for that. Let the sheep and the cattle and the goats and the camels stay with NATO. But we are not a part of NATO. And to thank Allah for that. But I want to share with you my view that not only would the world of Islam not be participating in the Great War, only those satraps of the West will be joining in that war, not the rest of the world of Islam. Confirming what the Prophet said, and whosoever joins with them belongs to them, not to us. Surah Al-Ma'idah. 
I therefore want to make this first statement. I do not anticipate the world of Islam participating in the Great War. It's a war between the West and uh, Russia and China. And uh, those who are supporters and clients of the West will be joining in the war. What is Pakistan's role? I am in Pakistan <laughs> because I don't see the last shower of rain, scholarly rain, coming from Turkey, which is comfortably in NATO, and nobody is making an effort. Nobody is making an effort to condemn it. I don't see the last shower of rain coming from the Arab world, where the oppression is intense. No people are suffering more than our Arab brothers. Their governments are oppressing them. You have a beard, you're in trouble. <laughs> yes. The governments in the Arab world have become pharaohs. And in Egypt, our people are suffering and groaning. Around the Arab world is happening. Perhaps there might be less oppression in Algeria. But oh yes, the people of Yemen are suffering. Oh yes, they've been suffering for seven years now. And despite that, there are sheep and cattle and goats and camels who have respect for Saudi Arabia. The people of Syria have suffered immensely because of this bogus jihad. And yet they come to snipe at me. Hmm? This bogus jihad. The people of Iraq have suffered so much. Hmm? The people of Libya are suffering terribly. Around the world, our people are suffering, in the Arab world particularly. But we don't see Arab scholarship recognizing Gog and Magog. No. We don't see Arab scholarship recognizing that Gog and Magog are those who control power in the modern West. So that's why I'm here in Pakistan. Because I believe that Pakistani Islamic scholarship, inshallah, will emerge, which will be the last shower of rain. And it will be therefore capable of explaining what would be the implications for Pakistan in the Great War. A great war in which Pakistan will not be intervening in the war on either side. And my answer is, that in the same way that the First World War and the Second World War, in which millions died, they had to be waged by the West in order to bring about the transition from Pax Britannica to Pax Americana. So too, I am explaining to you today my eschatological view that the Great War which is coming is a war which is planned to make possible the transition from Pax Americana to Pax Judaica. And when that transition takes place, then Israel will replace the United States as the ruling state in the world. Is it possible that this would happen? Is it possible that Israel can replace the United States of America as the next ruling state in the world. Let's use money to check it out. <laughs> Answer, they've already taken gold and silver out of the market. And they replaced it with bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money. How many years ago? A hundred years ago. And they move from paper money to electronic money, to cryptocurrency, to bitcoins, to digital money, to the petrodollar. And they're now poised <laughs> to bring one currency to mankind. And we say these cryptocurrencies are there 
to give a soft landing to that monetary system. And the one currency for all of mankind is around the corner. And who will control it? Israel. Do I need to continue to provide the evidence that they're well on the way to Pax Judaica? <laughs> and I'm not just dreaming that this is solid analysis. The implication for Pakistan of the Great War is that Israel wants to replace the United States as the next ruling state in the world. And when that happens, Pakistan is enemy number one in the world for Israel. How should Pakistan respond? In our next video, inshallah, we'll attempt that analysis. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.